Hi, this is John Whiteley, and welcome to our training video on QuickBooks Inventory Setup. QuickBooks Inventory Module allows the user to keep current data on each inventory item, including the quantity, price, and average cost. Later in this video, you will see a demonstration of how to set up your inventory categories, subcategories, and items in QuickBooks as created by Nerd Enterprises. It is important to choose the part inventory type when creating a new inventory item. The none inventory type is only selected for income and expense allocation purposes and is not connected to the inventory module. It is strongly recommended that you engage the services of a CPA when setting up your inventory configuration and items. The QuickBooks inventory module allows you to assemble a group of parts into a new item. For example, you could assemble a bicycle derived from various parts in your inventory. It's also important to know the optimum reorder level. Thus, an accurate knowledge of anticipated sales and delivery time from your vendor will play a key role in determining that correct level. QuickBooks offers an option of pasting multiple items into your items list during the setup process. This can save a lot of time if you have an exported listing from another software application. I would suggest that you keep the item name as short as possible in order for it to be visible on your QuickBook forms, especially when the item is at the bottom of parent items and categories. It is also vital that any inventory counting is accurate and that the users are properly trained on how to use the software. A full assessment of your inventory needs should be carried out by your CPA before you invest time and money in QuickBooks. Let's watch the video clip which shows us how to quickly set up our inventory data. Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how to set up your inventory in QuickBooks. And we're going to assume you've got, uh, you're setting up inventory for the first time. Because the first time you set up a, an item of inventory in QuickBooks, you can affect the change in the quantity on hand. Once an item is already in existence in the item list, you can no longer change the quantity on hand by way of import, or what I'm going to show you, which is using the Add Edit Multiple List Entries dialog in QuickBooks. And the great thing about that feature of QuickBooks is that it enables you to do the right planning using a spreadsheet. So then it's a simple copy and paste from the spreadsheet right into QuickBooks and then you click save and you're done and I'm going to show you how quick and easy this is once you've done the preparation in Excel. Now the first thing you'll need to do is make sure you've got the the, uh, the necessary columns at a bare minimum these are the columns you're going to need to set up. You're going to need your item name and this is uh, optional really sub item of but if you have sub items it will be required in other words if you have a group let's say you have shirts and then within that you have blue shirts and black shirts and white shirts those all would be a sub item of shirts perhaps that's why you would need to have the sub item of column set up and you'll see how that plays in when we look at QuickBooks in a minute the cost of goods sold account has to be in place the income account has to be in place the asset account has to be in place that's at a minimum what has to be there but also it follows pretty logically I think that you'd want to have your cost in there your sales price the quantity on hand how many are you starting out with because presumably you've already got some on hand if it's zero then it's zero and then the total value you can actually calculate as a simple function of saying equals and we use our arrow keys to uh, point to the cost hit the asterisk not the asterisk but the asterisk to affect the multiplication part of the equation and then we go to the quantity on hand. Cost times the quantity on hand gives me the total value. Remember we always track inventory at cost. When we sell it that's different. That's going to be the resale value. So total value can be calculated and then we'll just format that for accounting. So that as I enter in my items here in my list it will calculate the total value for me. Any little thing like that you can do like this to cut down on time you should do. Now in my example I'm only going to show a little more than a handful of items but the point I want to stress is that obviously this could be extended for you know any number of items. I mean an Excel spreadsheet goes down to uh, these days we're looking at a million forty eight thousand five hundred and seventy six lines theoretically that you could use. I'm not sure if the add edit multiple list entries feature in QuickBooks will take that much but uh, clearly you can set up uh, in Excel to house m most likely more than enough items. 
compared with what you're likely to uh, need to set up. So at this point, I'm not going to bore you showing you, uh, having you watch me do data entry, but I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to enter some sample items so I can show you how easy it is, once that's done, to dump it into QuickBooks. And of course, for your part, what you'd want to do is go ahead and you know, key the stuff in. Do the planning in Excel first, because when it's done right, like as you'll see, it'll take two seconds to bring it into uh, a, a QuickBooks and, and get the inventory set up on the books. Okay, now I'm keeping it simple, of course, for this free QuickBooks tutorial. But what I've done is I've just laid out some basic sample data here. And I laid out some blue t-shirts in all the different sizes. So if this was you and you had lots of t-shirts in all different colors and sizes, you would want to obviously do the whole thing. You know, set up all your sizes for all your colors. You need to sort of combine them into your item name. And I have a template that I've used actually with clients where you can actually build your whole product number around all the different combinations of color and size. and so if you're interested in that, uh, email me. I'll put it up in my Knowledge Center as a download for 10 bucks or something. But uh, this can be a, a great way to get started laying out your products and your items. If you find that you need to get more detailed, then of course I'm available for private training. And my other template might help you uh, do that planning. You may not need me for private training once you've got that template. And of course I'll probably do a video showing you how that works. In any case, um, once this is here, we're ready to go to QuickBooks. So let's come over to QuickBooks, which I just did. I secretly did it using my Alt-Tab key combination. And we'll come over here to where it says Lists. And we want to come to this last option that says Add, Edit, Multiple List Entries. And when I click that, it is going to bring up a dialog that actually looks a bit like a spreadsheet. It's kind of like a little spreadsheet within QuickBooks. And over here, we start off by choosing which list we want to add items for. So we're going to do inventory parts, which, by the way, is why I didn't have a column here for type, because the type is all going to be the same, because I can only do one type at a time. So if you have inventory parts and non-inventory parts, uh, I would suggest doing two separate lists in Excel, because you're going to copy and paste them in separately. Now, the next part that's very important is making sure that these columns line up exactly with how you've got it laid out in Excel because we're going to copy and paste it right from Excel so we need to make sure that we're, the size is exactly the same so you just want to double check and you can do that by kind of laying the two files side by side like here and looking and saying okay I've got my item name, sub item of, cost of goods sold, income, asset you just want to make sure that they're all there and that they're all in the same order so I've got them, then after asset I've got cost, sales price quantity on hand and total value. So I've already, of course, I took the time ahead of time to make sure this was set up properly. So what you want to do if you find that your columns are not organized that way is choose this customize columns button and you can fix it so that you have them exactly matching by just adding and removing whatever you need to. On the left hand side of the available columns, which means if it's here it hasn't been included, and on the right hand side are the columns you've already chosen to include, and the order in which you've chosen to include them. If you want to move the order around, simply select an item and choose move up or move down until you get things situated exactly where you need them. Once that's done, it is just as simple as copying and pasting. I'm going to highlight the whole range, press Control C to copy, Alt Tab gets me back to QuickBooks. I will click here and I am going to press Control V. Now what happens here initially is it gives me a warning because I've got a sub item of t-shirts but I haven't actually added in the t-shirts item yet. So what it says, what it does is it warns me and asks if I'd like to add it now and the answer is sure. And then it's going to bring up the whole add edit item dialog but all the information is already in place. Cost of goods sold, asset. I don't put a cost in here because the t-shirt is the parent item. I'm not actually selling that. So I almost don't want to put a cost to prevent any potential confusion when somebody's invoicing. In other words, if somebody invoices for that parent item, it's a mistake. And the fact that the zero uh, sales price comes up on that invoice should hopefully be a clue to whoever's doing that data entry that it is in fact a mistake. In other words, that's why I'm not putting any cost or sales information in here because I would never want to sell the t-shirt as the parent item. Now it says I need to specify an income account. I guess that didn't come through. So we have a sales account on the books and then I can click OK. Now that's set up. Now notice this error kind of goes away. 
And what it did was it created it here for me. So what I want to do is I want to delete this line. And I can do that by clicking in it to make sure that I've selected that line. Then right click and choose delete line. And that gets rid of it because it, once I added it, it added it in down here. So now we just want to review the information. Make sure that everything's in here. Right, we've got everything in here. Make sure we've got our values. And then once we think we're ready, we just hit save changes. And it says zero invoice uh, inventory has been received. Six inventory I have errors that need to be fixed before they can be saved. Click in each field in red to find out. Okay, so it doesn't like my total values. And it looks like I have to actually just click on it to make sure, I guess, that it's right. I'm not sure. And, but it looks like once I clicked on them, it fixed them. And but mind you, what QuickBooks is going to do is it's going to take whatever I've given it as the total value and divide that by the quantity on hand to come up with that item's average cost. Because as you hopefully know by now, QuickBooks does average cost everything. Now let's try saving the changes again. And it says six inventory items have been saved. Now the reason very specifically why I'm not going to stop and re-record it and not get the error is because you're likely going to encounter that when you do this. So I want you to see how to deal with it so you're not alarmed and you don't say, hey, that guy did that video and it didn't work. Okay, you're, so you're going to get that error most likely initially. I'm not even sure why, but once I clicked in, uh, somehow QuickBooks, I guess, figured out that it was okay. And so that was that. And that's it. It's, it's that easy. Just do your preparation, do your prep work in Excel. And it takes two seconds to set up your inventory items. Now if I say close and I go to lists and go to my item list, there I am. And I've got my t-shirts with my sub items. With large, blue, medium, small, extra large, double X, triple X. I had to put the triple X in there. Because some people like me take a triple X. Because I'm a big guy. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to email me, seth at nerdenterprises.com.